Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a beach themed cutting board. Um, I'll show you some of the materials that I use. So I'm going to start off by um, using painter's tape to uh, put tape along the sides over here, just so we have like a sharp edge. Um, I got these two colors that I really liked. Uh, I've been doing green lately, but I want to try something a little bit different. Um, I also mix in some pigment as well. I really like the way that the pigment kind of washes over the paint. Sometimes it gives it a really cool cell effect or just, you know, the, um, the shine of the pigment just creates some cool effects. Um, for the beach waves, I'm going to be using this. It's white dye. It helps um, create more cells. So uh, it's a little bit more colorful and uh, thick than using acrylic paint or using um, alcohol ink. I've done that in the past and I found you need to use a lot of it. If you use a lot of paint, the resin will get really goopy, which is not good. Um, and then ink just doesn't really give it that much contrast. So I found using this was really helpful the last time I made one. I use tabletop resin, two par. I love this resin because it gives you a really long play time. I've been able to play with it up to almost an hour, which is kind of unheard of for resin. Usually you have like a 20 to 30 minute window before it starts getting goopy. Um, another really important factor here is a heat gun. So this is how you're going to create your waves and your, um, your layers pretty much. Uh, I got this really cheap on Amazon, it was like 20 bucks. You don't need a super crazy one, you know. There's different attachments, but I find just using it regular is pretty helpful. So I'm going to get tape. Alright, so we're going to start pouring our resin. Um, I like to reuse my cups as much as possible, so uh, you'll see that I don't have clean cups. They're actually reused, so the resin dries and it's like hard as a rock, so you can pour more in there. These have probably been, been used like three or four times already, um, just because, you know, I like to save it. I don't want to keep throwing it out. Um, as for the cups, since it's part A, part B, I kind of just label the cups and, again, reuse them. Um, separately, they will always stay in liquid form. When you mix them together, that's when they begin to harden. So you can reuse these cups, it won't affect it. Um, if you get a little nervous, you don't have to. I just, I like to use less waste. So we're gonna get started on that. So I'm gonna be pouring my part B into my part B cup. Now you want to make sure you're pouring um, equal levels, otherwise you might not get them to dry correctly. I have come across that problem in the past and it really does suck because you have a, a beautiful finished piece and it'll never be hard. Um, so you kind of want to avoid that by making sure that they're even. These cups have lines on them so it makes it a little bit easier to tell. Um, right now I'm still working on that. Alright, yeah, so the, the ribbed lines kind of just make it a little bit easier to tell. So that's equal. Equal. I just have a fresh cup I'm going to be pouring it into. You're supposed to mix them um, about a minute or two. And then another reason why I love this resin is because the mixing time is only two to three minutes. I have bought resin before that you have to stir it for like five to seven minutes and that's a lot for me. I have a fractured scaphoid bone so um, that is very painful for me. I really hate mixing the resin. It's just a lot on my hand. Um, so I like this one because you don't have to sit there forever mixing it. and. Um, 
I usually do more than one pour in a day, so it calls arthritis. Now the part A is a little bit thicker, um, so just be aware of that. One's a little bit runny and then one's kind of on the thicker side. I also try to reuse my popsicle sticks. Wipe them down with like a paper towel after you're finished or just let them dry like on a flat surface and you should be able to reuse them. Again, it's just resin takes a lot of materials and uh, I'm making a lot of things with resin so I just want to save as much as I can. It's cheaper for me, it's better for the environment, and yeah. You know, it's not that hard. It's just an extra step. It doesn't take that long, so you know, that's up to you guys. If you feel free to do that. And also reuse paper towels. I kind of collect them like as I go throughout the week. If I use to dry something, I kind of just have like a whole paper towel stash. <laughs> all right, so now we have it all in the cup. I'm going to mix it. Got a popsicle stick. I like to use the big ones because it's a little easier on your hand. Um, when you're mixing it, you want to make sure you're getting the sides of the cup because I again have made that mistake, and um, some of your pour will harden, some of it will not. And you don't want to take that chance. So when you're stirring it, just make sure to get the edges. So now we're going to be stirring this for about two minutes. And you'll be able to tell. So it's it's looking really streaky right now. I don't think you guys can see that. but So the streaks are kind of showing you that it's not mixed properly. When it's mixed properly, properly you'll get some bubbles and it'll be clearer. Um, so you mix it for two minutes and you kind of let it stand for two minutes as well. Well, I'm letting that sit and get my pigment ready. I use Decor Room. They have, um, I think it's a set of 24 in one pack and it was cheap. It was only about $25. So you can use black pigment too, but I find them to be more expensive and you don't get as many color variations as you do with Decor Room. And they give you a lot more pigment with Decor Room, so I don't know, I've been kind of leaning more towards them. And now when you're putting the paint in with the resin, you don't want to put too much paint in. As I said earlier, it starts to get really goopy, so you're just going to like stick a popsicle stick in there and just put it in. I have my cup of reused popsicle sticks here, so I'm gonna try and reuse some of these. Oh crap. So literally what I do is take the popsicle stick. That's really like all the paint you need. Um, Cause these are pastel. They have a little bit of white mixed in, so they're pretty contrasty. I have worked with something that's been a little bit more shimmery and you have to use a little bit more of that. So I'm just giving that a nice stir. See, and it's still runny, it's not goopy. If you put more, it will be goopy. Just because it's not a lot of resin that I'm putting that into right now. Just want to make sure you're scraping the sides. Now the pigment is my favorite to mix. Just, I don't know, it's so beautiful. I don't know if you can really tell with the lighting, but it comes out like a shiny. So I like to do it because um, paint really doesn't have like a shiny coat to it. So the pigment kind of gives it that extra, it just does really cool things next to the paint. Alright, so we got this nice blue. It's a little on the like opaque side. If you don't like that, you can add more. Um, I think it might be cool because it can overlap 
my paint over here. And then this guy, you can use as many drops as you want. I usually use about two or three. Or it just pours out like that. <laughs> and again. And now that was only like two drops and it gets really, really contrasty here. It's like pure white now. Um, with ink, that does not happen. You need like a lot to make it look like this. And with paint, if you use a lot of it, it becomes goopy. So I really find that's the better alternative. All right, so we're gonna get started pouring. I usually start with like a darker color at the edge. And the pigment, you see how over here it's a little bit more on the clear side rather than laying the pigment over the paint. Now you kind of got like a, a cool ombre effect. So I'm actually going to pour the um, paint over this and then I'm going to pour the pigment over it again just so it's not clear because I don't want that. <laughs> So I'm going to let that dry um, and we'll show you guys the final results when it's when it's settled a little bit more. You see you got the cells over here kind of forming. Um, now you could let this completely dry and do another layer with just clear resin and put more of the white if you want to create more waves. Um, I kind of like the way it is now so we'll see. Thank you guys for tuning in. All right, so it's been sitting for about two hours now. It's not gonna move much more than it already has. But you can see what the white dye has done. Kind of created some cell effects over here. And then you can see the pigment and the shimmer in it. Now you can tell the pigment from the paint because you can, it's almost like a texture. Um, and you can see where it intertwined over there. I'm not going to be doing a second layer because I think this one came out really well. Thanks for watching my video, guys. Uh, you can subscribe, and I'll be posting more videos in the future. Different pieces, different techniques. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment. Um, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Links are below. Thank you so much.